19 for the back. In South Africa, the law dictates the fact that before we can even perform this dehorning procedure, we have to collect DNA samples and log them in a database. And then once they actually collect that rhino horn, it goes to a, a big warehouse. So if that rhino is poached in the future, we can actually trace the horn that's seized right back to this rhino in this reserve at this time. So vitals are good. So all our DNA is done. We've got skin, we've got hair, we've got blood. Good. So I think we're off the horn now. Right, we're ready to do the next yep. step, I think. I guess there's some irony in the fact that we're, we're kind of doing exactly what the poachers do themselves. The difference is the poachers would have killed this animal because the horn is essentially hacked out of their head. But we're trying really hard to do no harm. OK. I'll just keep the ears nice and close here, mate. The rhino's got nerves and a really rich blood supply sitting maybe half an inch below the level of the horn we're currently operating at to actually nick into that cone, into that really sensitive part of his face, it would be catastrophic. Stuff. It's unfortunate that poaching has driven us to dehorning rhinos and some people are certainly against the idea of removing a rhino's horn. They feel like it takes away the normal behaviour of a rhino. The counter to that is that that rhino is not going to be able to show any behaviour if it's been killed. So I'm on the side of removing the horn. It's the most logical thing to do. If you take away the whole reason for someone poaching that rhino, then, then surely that's, that's a positive step ahead. Over time, we've realised that just a straight cut to remove the horn is no longer the way to go. The challenge is that if you do that, you're still leaving quite a bit of horn in the rhino's head. And unfortunately, that amount of horn is enough motivation for poachers to come in and kill that rhino. So we actually have to try to shape the horn back so there's just a really small margin of, of horn tissue sitting over that cone. Be good. Yep. Yeah. It's a pretty smooth finish now. Obviously, you got rid of the bulk there, which is the part the poachers might go after, but that should right. give you a. Yeah, that smooth. looks good. All good. All right, let's just seal this up. Out here, where there are flies everywhere, it's important to use an antiseptic spray. It just makes sure that our work stays clean. Right. Let's move back to the vehicle there. We'll keep you safe. Away we go. Suddenly the lights are on. You can see it's just, it's not attractive to a poacher. Mm. It just isn't. There's nothing there to worry about. And that's what makes the difference. A rhino can live up to 50 years, which means this juvenile has over 40 years to live the life it truly deserves. Now it's cooling from mum. Yeah. The mum won't be too far away, will she? She's, She's got to be just over the rise there, yeah. It's going to be up there somewhere. They, they, they find each other very quickly. There's no magic bullet that's going to stop rhino poaching. Whatever there's money involved here, and, and big money, people are going to be desperate. They're going to try anything. But hopefully, we can start to reverse that trend.